What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome into the Packaday Podcast here on YouTube. I'm your host, Andy Herman. Of course, you can always follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Today, my main topic of discussion is going to be the 2021 Green Bay Packers. I've already heard, you know, the the doom and gloom of, you know, people believing that Green Bay is not going to be able to get back and, you know, with losing players potentially like a Preston Smith, maybe a Dean Lowry, um, you know, maybe having to make some potentially tough roster cuts. Of course, you know, Aaron Jones, Corey Lindsley, Kevin King, you know, Mercedes Lewis, you know, all these different free agents that Green Bay is going to have to, you know, deal with, Jamal Williams, etc., uh, that this is going to be a very difficult offseason, which I agree with. And I think it's something that Russ Ball is going to have to kind of work with and obviously Brian Gutekunst. But I think it's very manageable. So I'm going to get to that in just a moment. Before I do so, there was obviously one big news uh, and noteworthy piece of news uh, from Thursday that I want to go over. And that's, of course, that the Packers did hire, in fact, Maurice Drayton, their assistant special teams coach as the future special teams coordinator. Uh, hasn't officially been announced by the Packers yet, but reported by numerous outlets. Of course, yesterday, um, Rob Domovsky had uh, tweeted out that uh, that he had expected it to be the case. And then Tom Pelissero, I believe, was the first that broke the news that he would be the special teams coordinator. Again, not official by the Packers, uh, but all signs are pointing that way, just working out the contract and kind of going from there. It does sound like, and forgive me for not knowing who tweeted this out, I believe it was Tom Silverstein uh, tweeted out um, something to the effect of uh, one of the reasons that Green Bay wanted to get this deal done so quickly is that there were, you know, with all the new head coaches around the league, that there were some coaches that were potentially looking to poach Drayton as their special teams coordinator. So uh, that's why they wanted to get that deal done so quick. At least that's what was reported. So, you know, what I mentioned on Twitter on Thursday, nobody knows what you know, what Marie Strayton's going to be as a special teams coordinator. You don't know. I don't know. Your mom doesn't know. Uh, sorry, I'm sure your mom is a great lady, but she has no idea whether or not Marie Strayton's going to be a good special teams coach. We simply don't know. There's no way for anyone knowing, even those who have covered the team, you know, 365 days a year and have been in the building and watching practices, they have no idea what Marie Strayton's been doing uh, from a special team standpoint or what he brings to the table. Only Matt LaFleur knows that uh, from his time with them over the course of the last couple of years. Remember, this is a Mike McCarthy uh, coach that he brought in as an assistant special teams coordinator and Matt LaFleur kept him on and is now moving him into that, you know, very important special teams coordinator role. So we'll see what he's able to do. And uh, for those of you who ever, ever thought that you could do your job better than your boss, well, you should be celebrating Marie Strayton. Uh, he gets the opportunity opportunity to show that uh, he was better than his boss. And there's not really much way to go except for up. So hopefully this like two decade run of pretty brutal special teams play can come to an end and Marie Strait and can be the person to do so. The other no, you know, piece of news, I guess it's not really news, but you know, conjecture on my part, if nothing else, this is probably D-Day for Mike Patton. You got to think with, you know, Matt LaFleur likely giving his uh, press conference, I would think on Friday, I think he'll do his end of season press conference on Friday. Maybe he pushes it off further, but if that press conference is in fact on Friday, you got to think that, you know, this is potentially D-Day for Mike Patton and he's going to make that decision prior to going into that press conference. You never know for sure, but it certainly feels like Friday would be the, the day to make that decision one way or the other. And if they're going to, you know, re-up Mike Pettin, sign him to a new contract or go in a different direction. My gut still tells me that they'll go in a different direction, but I think it's a legitimate coin flip up until this point. Maybe as you're listening to this, the decision's already been made, but as I'm recording this, it has not. So we'll see what happens on Friday. So what I want to do then is go, uh, again, for my main part of today's show, go over position by position. And let's take, let's strip away everything that we don't know. And I'm going to take a couple liberties here, but let's strip away all the unrestricted free agents. Let's strip away uh, players that we don't think are going to be back, like a Dean Lowry and a Preston Smith. And I'll probably be going over why I think some of those things in a future episode. But let's just strip it down into the, the meat and potatoes of what's left. What we kind of know for sure is going to be the core of this Packers team going into 2021. So all the unrestricted free agents are gone. Uh, some restricted free agents I don't have on here. And we, of course, don't know who Green Bay is going to draft. We don't know if they're going to be able to find some, some cheap veterans in free agency with a little bit of money that maybe Russ Ball can muster up. Let's just look at it from the, the bare bones of things. So at quarterback, of course, you're still going to have Aaron Rodgers. Spoiler alert. He will still be the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers in 2021. So 
That, of course, is going to give you a puncher's chance at a Super Bowl pretty much every year, especially if he played anywhere near what he did in 2020. Uh, you know, not necessarily saying that he has to put up another MVP performance, but um, unless his legs go, which he, he just mentioned was such a huge part of what he kind of found on tape in 2010, unless something like that where, you know, he doesn't have the ability to kind of step into his throws and have that hitch and um, do what he wants to do and kind of, you know, mirror up his, you know, the rhythm and the timing and everything that he, he needs to do to be a very successful quarterback in the system, you would expect him to be able to go out and have a very similar type of year that he had in 2020. So I think that's 1A and you start there at running back. I know Jamal Williams and, and uh, of course, Aaron Jones are going to be free agents. Let's say they're gone. You still have A.J. Dillon, who I think in this last game against Tampa has to give you some, um, you know, uh, at least a belief that he can go out and be a pretty darn good running back. I know it was in very limited playing time, but we saw him catch the ball out of the backfield, make a nice move. We saw him do some power running. We certainly saw that late in the season and what he's able to do um, when he gets extended carries. Um, in this last game, I saw him do a really great blitz pickup. So he's showing that he can do everything at a high level. Now it's just, can he carry the load consistently through the course of a season? When you spend a second round pick on a running back, you're expecting them to do just that. I think AJ Dillon's going to be primed for a big season next year. And I think they're going to go out and grab a couple, you know, maybe like a fourth and a sixth round pick in the draft as well. Maybe a, a lesser known free agent or may, maybe not lesser known, but maybe a cheaper free agent like a James White or Marlon Mack, someone like that. And I think you can put together still a really good running back group and still be able to run this offense the exact same way that Matt LaFleur wanted to run it this year. And again, I think you can expect the jump from A.J. Dillon next year. How about fullback H-back? You're going to get back Josiah DeGuara and Dominique Daphne out of nowhere really proved that I think he has something to give to this Packers team moving forward as well. So I, you know, I think you have to be excited about that. You know, certainly if you have two H-back, fullback, tight end type players that can do a variety of different things, that's going to give Matt LaFleur some more options with the different formations that he can use. At wide receiver, you still have your same top three at worst. Um, Devontae Adams, MVS, who's coming off a really strong end of the year, especially with his game against Tampa. And then, you know, Alan Lazard. So you've got your top three from this year back. And of course, there may be an opportunity to improve that either via the draft or maybe free agency. Technically, Devin Funchess is under contract and you don't save much money at all by letting him go. So he could be somebody that's on that roster. Of course, you have a you know EQ that would make it as well. And Malik Taylor, some guys who could still step up. But I think the core there that we know pretty well is Devontae Adams, MBS, and Alan Lazard. Tight end, a little bit trickier. Robert Tunyon is technically a restricted free agent. I'd be shocked if he ends up going anywhere. I think Green Bay will uh, figure out a way to retain him almost no matter what. Mercedes Lewis is a question mark. Is he retire? If he doesn't retire, I got to think that he's back. But at this point, I think it's safe to assume that at least Robert Tunyon will be back. And then again, when you kind of combine that with what Daphne and of course, um, uh, Josiah DeGuara brings to the table. And then you still have Jay Sternberger, who... I think definitely disappointed this past season, but he still has some talent and it does take tight ends longer to acclimate and kind of get involved. We saw it with Tunyon. Uh, we've seen it even with Jermichael Finley to a little bit of a lesser extent, but it took him a couple of years to get going. Hopefully that's the case with Jay Sternberger and next year can be the year that he kind of breaks out and has a, a much better season. Let's look at the offensive line. David Bakhtiari, you know, his injury is certainly going to have a, a, you know, play a part in this decision-making process and what they do. But when push comes to shove, if they can get through the early part of the season and if Green Bay makes another playoff push, you know that David Bakhtiari is going to be out there, you know, probably by midseason, but certainly in time for your end of the season run and playoff push. So uh, he'll be back, of course. And then I still think, you know, Billy Turner could be an interesting cap casualty, but based on what he was able to bring with his versatility this past year, I think he comes back. So I think you can kind of bank on those two at some point next year. And then you've got Elton Jenkins, Lucas Patrick, and John Runyon Jr., again, as a worst-case scenario. And all three of those players, um, obviously Jenkins, really, really good. Lucas Patrick had his ups and downs, struggled against Tampa, but at right guard was very, very consistent for the most part this season. Left guard, he struggled at. Um, like I said, did struggle against Tampa, but for the most part, that was the exception to the rule. And then John Runyon Jr., if he can take a jump in his second year, it's not unthinkable that he could start in that situation as well. So again, bare minimum, Rodgers, Dylan, DeGuara, Daphne, Adams, MBS, Lazard, Tunyon, Bakhtiari, Turner, Jenkins, Patrick, and Runyon, 
that's an offense that you can win with. I mean, and we've seen very similar offenses like that, you know, with uh, to that uh, with, that Green Bay ran with this season with a high level of success, and that can be good teams. So I think you're still really good on offense, and that's again bare minimum, not adding anything else, which you know they're going to do both via the draft and maybe bringing back some guys and maybe a veteran free agent here or there. How about on the flip side? Zadaria Smith and Rashawn Gary rushing the passer. Preston Smith didn't bring a lot to the table this year. I don't think losing him other than depth is, is going to hurt all that much. Um, so you definitely have Z and Gary who are you know the better of the two. Z hopefully has more of a 2019 season than a 2020 season, probably more like something in the middle. And Rashawn Gary seems to be ready to break out. So next year is going to be a big season for him. Inside, Kenny Clark, Kingsley Kiki. Uh, you know, you really want to see Kiki take a jump next year and be more of a, a three down player. That's going to be something that he's tasked with, but uh, I definitely think that he's going to be up to that. At linebacker, you've got Chris Barnes, Kamal Martin, you know, your two rookies from this season who sh showed some flashes. I still think Kamal Martin has a ways to go, but I think Chris Barnes is going to be somebody that they're going to count on at that inside linebacker for the foreseeable future. At safety, uh, Adrian Amos, I think there's a very good chance that he's back. He's also an interesting potential cap casualty. I think he's just played too well. Um, I think actually there may be a better chance that they maybe extend him and put a couple years on the deal than, than let him go. But that one's maybe a little bit closer, but I still think he's back paired with Adrian Amos. And then you've got a guy like Vernon Scott too. Um, and, and even like a Henry Black who are coming back that provides some depth for you. And then corner. I think corners the one and special teams. Those two are the ones that are really interesting. And obviously you get Jair Alexander back. Channon Sullivan is a restricted free agent. Kevin King's an unrestricted. I don't think Kevin King's going to be back. You've got Josh Jackson and Kadar Holloman. It did, certainly did not seem at any point like Green Bay had any trust in those two players. They were inactive for the vast majority of the last part of the season. But there's a decent chance you got to feel like Green Bay is going to be able to upgrade and that this is going to be a major point of emphasis for Brian Gutekunst this offseason. Um, neither Chandon Sullivan or Kevin King lived up to expectations. And I think there's a great opportunity for Green Bay to try to go out and upgrade, whether that be via the draft or bringing in maybe a veteran that could help. So I would expect this position to be an upgrade, even though right now on paper it is not. And then at special teams, J.K. Scott, Hunter Bradley, both wildly inconsistent, and you could go in a different direction there. And I, it's tough to think that either of those would not be upgrades as well. Mason Crosby, it's going to be tough to be better than perfect at field goals, and he is getting up there in age. But um, I still think he's back. His contract's a little bit interesting as well, but I'm not sure Brian Gutekunst and Matt LaFleur are going to want to mess with that when you've got a kicker that's as consistent as Mason Crosby. So again, looking at defense, Zadarius Smith, Rashawn Gary, uh, you know Kenny Clark, Kingsley Kiki, Chris Barnes, Kamal Martin, Jair Alexander, Adrian Amos, Darnell Savage. Need a couple corners. And then on special teams, after Mason Crosby, you need some upgrades at probably punter and long snapper, or at least could look that way. But on paper, I like the core of this team. And that's, again, not spending any more money. That's not signing any or you know drafting anyone with their 10 draft picks that they have. They're going to add talent to this team. Maybe get one of those core guys back like a Corey Lindsley or an Aaron Jones. Maybe, or if they don't, maybe be able to have some money to go out and get some, you know, at least one player in free agency that could help. Maybe see a Devin Funches come back. They're going to be able to, you know, add to this team even more on that core that I just mentioned. There's no reason to think, in my opinion, that this team can't run it back as long as they're able to get kind of over the hangover of two straight NFC Championship losses and are able to kind of give everything they got to make one more run at this thing. I think there's a great opportunity that they can do so. And when you've got you know premium players at premium positions, Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, Devontae Adams at wide receiver, David Bakhtiari when he gets back at left tackle, Zadari Smith and Rashawn Gary potentially, if, especially if Gary can take a jump and Z can get back to playing like he was in 2019, both those guys at edge rusher, Kenny Clark as an interior defender, Jair Alexander at corner, and then two really solid safeties in Savage and, and Amos. That is a hell of a core um, when you look at it that way. So they have some th they have some building to do. Brian Gutekunst and, and Russ Ball have their work cut out for them. Matt Lafleur is going to have to coach his ass off to make sure that there is no hangover from a second straight NFC Championship loss. But I like this team going forward. They're going to add more pieces. Don't give up on them quite yet. And uh, yeah, I think that's all I got to say about that. So enjoy your Friday, everyone. I'll be back here tomorrow for an all new episode of the Pack a Day podcast here on YouTube. Of course, make sure to check out uh, Maggie, Jacob, and Jimmy on uh, actually just Maggie and Jimmy today on today's audio version of the Pack a Day podcast. 
That's going to do it for me. Until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go!